Hi guys! Thank you for all the support on this channel and I hope you will enjoy this video. I know it's the time of October and a lot of doll customizers are focusing on the spirit of Halloween dolls. Ooh. But because of my economic situation I can't afford to do a doll that I want. But that's not stopping me from doing dolls at all. <laughs> so today I am making a celestial druid archer doll. I know that's a mouthful but bear with me. I couldn't decide if I wanted a long dress or a more Amazon style. Hmm, let's see in the end. And let's get started with the doll. The first is to decide which doll to use. I'm really falling in love with Frankenstein's face mold and body color, so I wanted to try to use her. So let's remove all her accessories and the neck bolt. And the hair. I wish I could save the hair, but it's all tacky with glue. Hmm, sad. To remove the rest of the hair, we need to remove the head. To remove the head, pour some hot water into a container. I'm using a regular mug and dunk the head in there for some solid seconds to soften the vinyl. And then you just Oh no! Uh, and the neck peg got stuck. Oh well. Let's tug out the neck peg first and glue it back in using some super glue. Well, it's in there, but I will have some trouble posing her head up and down now, which isn't really a bother for me, but... <laughs> Let's remove all her stitches with a low grid sandpaper. And let's remove some mold lines, just because I felt like it. I'll be giving this girl some blushing later. Let's go back to the head and remove the rest of the hair. Ooh, so nice and bald. I use nail polish remover to remove the factory paint, but you guys can use acetone, it's usually easier. But this was the only thing I got. I'm gonna use this white yarn to reroute the hair, much fluff. The way I do is I take a strand of yarn, cut it and because this yarn is so thick, I slit it into four pieces before inserting a needle and string it through the factory hole and tie a knot on the other side. This process takes a lot of time, like a lot of time. I only do the upper head part because I would be giving her an undercut in the end.
I do the undercut by trimming some yarn and then using a regular wooden glue or glue you would use for wood. It's like I use it for basically everything. To just put it straight on her head uh, in part and tapping on some yarn flock wool things on top. And waiting for it to dry before giving her a middle part. This part, haha. <laughs> this part was pretty easy, but takes patience. You just take a small part and crisscross it over each other until you can't see the original head. Let's give her head some protection before spraying her with MSC and sketching out the face design. I start by using a green pen to place the eyes. I want to give her big eyes and some sad eyebrows. I don't know why, but I promise it would look very cute in the end. This is a very tedious process, but so fun. I totally went overboard with the blush using like two different red and oranges, which gave her a feel of being cold.
I fill in all the white parts using Warhammer uh, white paint like the eye whites and the, the eyebrows. I'm building up the color slowly and patiently, trying to use more pastel and pens than regular Warhammer colors like I used to, to just try something different. And I must say it gives it a lot more dimension that I can never get with paint. Don't forget to seal with MSC when you can't get farther or want to save your project like, uh, like the doll girls say. My camera died just when I was about to give her lashes and blush her body. I'm so sorry for that. But at least we can see me doing a final spray of the face of the body. Before glossing her lips and eyes. I mix water and varnish to not make it dry and sticky. Sorry for bad quality, I think it's because I did this uh, late at night. Let's remove the hair protection and give her some clothes. I didn't have the fabric in it to give her the fairy look. Neither did I really know how to make the wings without plastic. But I had this big piece of fur that I could make a cute skirt of. And using this warbler to make the chest piece. And here she is in all her glory. A lot of the footage ended up being unusable because of my hand, but we can finish this together by finishing up the bow. Yay! I'm using more Warhammer color to wash and dry brush the bow. Then I used the warbler that I used on the chest piece, all the accessories to detail the bow. I'm also showing all the details that you guys didn't get to see earlier.
But before the warbler, I used this orange thread to bind the bow. Then heat up the warbler and form it into place. I'm screwing a hole in the material so it will be easier to glue in the thread the string or thread. And here's the bow! Uh, with that we're finished with this doll! Woohoo! Here are some pics I took outside. It was a beautiful autumn day. I think she fits well with the autumn leaves. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and feel like subscribing for more doll related videos and follow my other accounts down in the description below. <laughs> and I will see you some other time. Bye!